So uh, I'm Homera Nassim, and I'm a research and development engineer for AlphaGary. I have worked for AlphaGary for 35 years, developing thermoplastic compounds in the area of wire and cable, automotive, medical, food packaging, and uh, general purpose soft touch applications, uh, uh, specifically thermoplastic elastomers. Mm, I have um, a master's degree in physical chemistry and a master's degree in organic chemistry. And I have four patents in the area of wire and cable and beverage packaging. I am uh, on the board of Society of Plastics Engineers, Thermoplastic Elastomers Special Interest Group. And I'm also the co-chair for the technical program of TPE TopCon. Bill Blasius, I'm a senior principal engineer with Rogers Corporation in Rogers, Connecticut. And I've been a member of the TPE Special Interest Group Board of Directors since 2007 and have been working on TPE TopCon since 2010. I'm currently the co-chair of the conference and co-chair of the technical program committee. And this year's uh, uh, TopCon theme is uh, exploring sustainable innovations. And in line with this theme, uh, the first day session are on um, automotive um, uh, sustainability and, and on automotive in innovation and sustainability. And I'm really excited to hear Dr. Kiseltas from Ford uh, regarding improving the sustainable content in thermoplastic elastomers. Um, there's also another uh, paper that I'm equally excited to hear, and that is uh, by Dr. Sam Karashenko of BSF, and that is on um, uh, the uh, choice um, uh, or using polyurethane-based composites as a sustainable choice for rubber replacement. And Bill, what do you think? Um, <laughs> regards to the sustainable innovation, I, you've, uh, you've done a lot of work getting all these papers together. So I'm sure you've got some special ones uh, that you want to highlight. Every year, we try to come up with a central theme that we can put all the papers and presentations around and give us some coherence. And this year, we we're really kind of focusing on how to renew TPEs. So back in the 60s and 70s was a boom time for uh, new innovations in, in thermoplastic elastomers. Um, they were fairly simple relative to what things are now, uh, but with the introduction of Craton and Santaprene, things really changed. And we've really taken that those innovations and, and stretch them into polyamides and polyesters. And things have matured out. The market really grew by replacing traditional rubber materials. And then we started finding ways of integrating TPEs into products that didn't have TPEs or any kind of a rubber and en enhancing the performance of those new products. But we're kind of entering another phase. So, you know, people have described uh, commercial markets as growing in S-curves where uh, nothing happens much and then all of a sudden explodes with innovation, plateaus, explodes, plateaus, explodes. Well, I think we're entering one of those plateauing times again, probably the second time for TPEs. And with this conference, we really want to show people some of the uh, farther out things that are happening while keeping it grounded in things that are commercially available. So we're trying to integrate both uh, cutting edge university research with uh, things that are, are just happening literally under your feet. So we're going to have papers on the piezoelectric properties of TPEs some really unique liquid crystal elastomers, things I had never heard of before. Like, how can this even be a thing? And um, in relation to the, the COVID problems and are actually just continuing issues with um, 
drug resistance in microbes, uh, there'll be a paper, uh, a keynote from uh, Professor Spontak at the universe, uh, yeah, North Carolina State University on inherently antimicrobial thermoplastic elastomers. So we're really excited about that. Um, on, the, on the other side, we'll also uh, hear some, uh, we'll, we'll also get some information from uh, Division of Michelin on uh, reclaiming tire rubber into thermoplastic elastomers and from BASF on um, some extra spongy thermoplastic urethane foams that are being used in Adidas running shoes. So it's kind of like that combination of way out there cutting edge with how are people taking advantage of what's out there in a sustainable way. One other thing that we really do want to do with this conference is to honor some of the pioneers of uh, the thermoplastic elastomers industry. And that includes Dr. Vivian Malpass, who has been a chair of this conference for I don't know how many years, pretty much since its inception. And Ken Keir, who has, was a longtime member of the TPE Special Interest Group, Board of Directors, one of the founding members, and a continuing contributor of um, his artistry and his uh, renderings of Mr. Stretchy, who's been our logo for this conference for a number of years. And, and you mentioned, uh, the, you know, COVID-19 and its impact on some of the developments that have happened uh, in the thermoplastic er elastomers area. Uh, and um, I know our company has focused uh, a lot more on the, um, the, the PPE and the medical um, equipment and, uh, you know, things related to the safety uh, that we can, um, you know, uh, sort of... Uh, uh, part participate into that area where we can uh, come up with materials that are going to generate products that would be safer uh, for the uh, you know general consumer. Uh, so uh, I, I'm sure there's uh, other companies that are focusing um, uh, in the area of thermoplastic elastomers uh, in that uh, arena as well. One, one fairly unique thing that we're going to be doing this year is really focusing on market trends. So if, if people have some kind of a projection target to work to, it, it tends to help people focus their R&D efforts. So we're going to have uh, trend talks on automotive elastomers, regulatory issues affecting elastomers in the general market plastics. Um, we'll have a speaker who will be talking about industrial design and how that relates to the use of thermoplastic elastomers. And we'll also have a, a processing trend presented by Paul Anderson of Coperion. Paul's been a, a, a frequent contributor to TPE TopCon and his insights through the years of machinery and processing technology you know, really has defined the industry and he's going to help define it going out into 2030. Bill, you forgot to mention the paper on the uh, durability of 3D uh, printed elastomer structures. That's another exciting uh, paper that I think, um, you know, the new trend is about the 3D printing. And so we can, you know, kind of uh, further that along, that dialogue along. Yes, it's interesting that we have both a, a talk on printing thermoplastic elastomers and evaluating the, the components made from them. So we're just bundling those, those things up into a, a 3D printing theme, sub-theme. So when we use the term sustainability in our theme for this year, we're looking at it from two directions. One direction was sustaining innovation where one invention builds on top of another and builds on top of another along the lines of the the s curve that i had talked about before just want to always keep something renewed and and looking forward to new materials new applications new ways of utilizing tpes to 
enhance the consumer's experience with a part. The other way is more of an environmental way, um, just trying to push towards more of a circular economy where things get renewed or people are uh, using materials from renewable resources. Uh, we've, we've been deeper into this in, in prior conferences, uh, just where people are using um, bio-renewable sources for thermoplastic elastomers like polyesters and polyamides. And this year it's more about uh, getting recycled materials back in. So things don't end up in landfills is taking up space, basically being a waste of carbon. Yeah, the benefit to being virtual is that uh, we are able to make it more global and we have tried to um, you know, do the sessions and the speakers that are speaking from, you know, from East Coast to West Coast to, um, you know, uh, you know, people listening from India or, you know, Far East and what have you. Uh, so there will be a lot more participation. Uh, a lot of people can benefit from the, from the talks. Um, not to say that it will be recorded so they can always go back to the recording if they miss any of the papers, but we hope to um, definitely increase the attendance uh, by going virtual. Yeah, our, our primary concern was the safety of the attendees and speakers and just all the participants. Um, so this way everyone can still get their, their dose of TPE knowledge with, without having to make that choice between uh, the safety of themselves and their families and, and learning more about cutting edge TPEs. At the, at the beginning of the conference, we certainly will be taking some time out to, to honor Viv Malpass and Ken Kierad and Bob Weglin and there's a, a slew, Bob Abel, a slew of people who have been involved in, in making both the industry and promoting the Society of Plastics Engineers Thermoplastic Elastomer Special Interest Group. Uh, they they really have been pioneers on on multiple fronts, and um, it's kind of like getting to that point where another generation is coming along, and they they won't have experience having been able to work with these folks who are who are now getting into their 80s. So, me being just turning 60, uh, I remember when when Santa Prine first came out. I was just like in my early 20s. And, and messing around with that. And so I, I was able to enjoy that interaction and, and grew up through that. But people, even in their, their 40s and like certainly down to their 20s, they never had the chance to, to interact with folks like Ken and Viv. So I uh, just want to make sure that uh, their contributions are remembered long term. <laughs>